Tooth complement is the third, final, and most commonly used convention for representing negative numbers in binary that we're going to talk about in this class. Um, so let me show you the definition of two's complement. So it works like this. Uh, suppose A is a 4-bit binary number. Then, two's complement of A would be one's complement of A plus one. Okay, so what does this mean? In order to represent a negative number in two's complement form, the first thing we have to do is we have to specify how many bits of storage that we have. Um, now this is important because if we don't do this first, we could end up with um, some confusion later on once we've done the conversion. Okay, great, so then um, in order to get two's complement, first we're going to invert all of our binary bits, and then we add one to the least significant bit. So for um, this particular example, if we have four bits at our disposal, the bit that is to our right, this rightmost bit, is the least significant bit. So for two's complement, we're going to invert all these bits and then add one to the least significant bit, okay? So we're just going to add one to it once we've inverted all of these. Um, okay, so if we are specifying how many bits we have at first, generally you'll see um, four, eight, or 16-bit two's complement form but you can really specify any number of bits. It's just important to do that first. So let me show you an example of how this works. Um, let's say we want to express negative five in decimal in binary form using four bit two's complement. Okay, so the first step is um, we've already specified that we have four bit two's complement here. So we're going to convert this five to four bits of binary. So that way it'll fit into our definition here. So convert the magnitude of our number, just this five, into four bits of binary. So if you do the conversion of five into binary, Five in binary is one, zero, one. So we actually only need three bits in order to represent this number. But it's important that we put this zero here in the most significant bit position because we need all four bits here before we proceed with two's complement. So once we've done that, now we're ready to take one's complement of that number. So we're going to take one's complement of this result here, one's complement of 0, 1, 0, 1 is just all of these bits flipped. So if we have a 0, this will turn into a 1. If we have 1, this turns into a 0. That's a 1. That's a 0. So one's complement of our result from step number 1 is 1, 0, 1, 0. So now we're ready for our plus 1 steps. So we're just going to add 1 to the least significant bit add one to least significant bit. So plus one, that gives us one, zero, one, one. And this here is negative five in two's complement four bit convention or form. Okay, so now I wanted to describe to you a potential pitfall. So suppose um, we did not specify how many bits of binary that we had. Suppose we just um, converted our five into one, zero, one. And then we did one's complement on this, we got zero, one, zero. And then we added one to it and we got zero, one, one. So this will be the result of doing two's complement 
on three bits um, of our binary number. So then at this point, um, okay, we know that we have four bits of storage, so maybe we might just kind of tack on an extra zero here in the most significant bit position. So we might report our final answer as 0011. But as you guys saw here, to do it correctly, we would get 1011. And this is important to make sure that um, you get the correct result here. So when we decode it, we're actually going to get our original number because this is different than this. So that's why I stress that it's important to um, specify how many bits um, your two's complement convention is using and then even if you don't necessarily need all those bits to represent the number, go ahead and write them all with a zero in the place to fill up all of the um, positions in your bit container.